Uh, hello, everybody. Mic check. Let me just check if this thing works. So, let me be honest with you. I have a confession to make. I'm really stuck on this idea, idea that art is important. You see, ever since I've been a kid, I've always been interested in art. I've been drawing and painting on anything that I could find. This really bugged my mother because I would never color anybody's hair correctly, supposedly. It could be brown, it could be brown, gray, red, purple, but never the color black. My sister had a hard time too because I'd end up doodling in her school notebooks, which would get her into trouble. But nonetheless, um, I was really attracted to it. My passion towards it, um, it became more and more stronger as time went by. And I was always intrigued by this question that why is art so important? What is the use of art? And most important of all, why am I attracted to it so much? And why does it feel so good? I got the answer to this question a little later in my life when I realized that art for me was imagination brought to life. It, whenever I painted, I felt liberated because the possibilities were endless I could do anything that I wanted to do. Later on, I started going to galleries and got exposed to even more art. I got to know what's a Picasso, what's a Hussein, and just to be in the presence of beautiful art was such a strong and powerful experience for me. At times, it would even trans transcend me to a different dimension. But the moment I would step out of the gallery, that dream would just disappear. What I would get to see were probably dirty walls and lots of advertisements trying to sell me things that I didn't really want to buy. All of this started to change when I got introduced to the idea of street art. What really fascinated me about it was the fact that all you needed was a spray can or a bucket of paint and you could go and put your message out on a wall for the world to see and connect with the world directly. There was no middleman. In fact, it wasn't even important who you were. What was really important was what you had to say. And I had a lot of things to say. <laughs> so I met, I met uh, Sergio, um, who's a Brazilian street artist, on one of his trips to India. We soon became really good friends, and we came up with this idea of creating a project which later uh, got to be called the Brinda project, um, which would be a sort of a cultural exchange um, between Brazil and India. So now I'll take you to a video of a first wall. <laughs> So this first wall was actually based on something that is really important. In fact, it could be the most important thing to a common man. And that was his faith. His firm belief in a higher power that could protect him and take him through the troubled waters of life. And that's what we tried to depict here. But when we actually got to the space and we started painting, the locals there would constantly ask us, like, what are you doing? Is this for some political party? Is this the Swach Bharat Abhyan? Is this like, are you getting even paid for this? Why are you doing it here? And this should be in some gallery. But when we made them understand that this art was actually for them, and we were actually working for them. So after we finished the first wall, me and Sergio found ourselves in a very philosophical place. You know, like we were looking through all of these things that we have in common 
and we somehow felt that there was one thing that universally connects us all and that is death. So I went back to the wall a couple of days ago and found that this wall is now not there anymore. There is a door in the window right next to the, where the characters were and the only portion of the wall that has not been destroyed is this portion which is actually the pallu of the sari and it says rejoice the end. So even though our wall is no longer there, the message is still there. Okay, now we come to the third wall. By this time, we were at the end of the project and we were in a mood to celebrate. And we thought that what better way to celebrate other than music and dance, which was such a big part of both the cultures. So what we did is that we took a very busy road in Delhi and we wanted to show the transition of a classical Indian dancer into an authentic samba dancer. So we put the classical Indian dancer on one corner the samba dancer on the other corner and based on which way the traffic was moving, you'd see the transition. So here's a video. So the crowd that we met at the third wall was absolutely different to the crowd that we had met in the last wall. In the last wall we were confronted by naughty kids and here we were confronted by elderly people who were better behaved and who were like out on a stroll and they loved what we were doing, they really opened up with us, like we connected with them in a way that I could not have imagined earlier that I could connect with them. And Altogether, they felt that this wall had actually brought the entire community together, which is absolutely lovely, which is probably why I feel that art is important. The second thing that I want to talk about is that art is for everyone. I don't believe that art is something that should be restricted in galleries and only viewed by art intellectuals and people who claim that they can understand it. You know, it's been a part, it's been like a pivotal part of our evolution. Man has been scribbling on walls since the caveman days. It's nothing new. Even in our Indian culture, street art has existed in the form of Madhubani art and a lot of other traditional art forms. And what's really interesting about street art for me is the fact that it's art that can be viewed by everyone but owned by no one. And in today's day and age, where your happiness can be quantified by the number of things you possess, this idea is kind of beautiful and weird, you know. Now, let me take you... Now, the next point that I want to make is that art is powerful, you know. Art can have an impact on people's lives. Now, let me take you back, a little back in time and tell you an interesting story. So, me and my childhood friend Karan Talwar, who's a filmmaker, wanted to open a company together and do some interesting stuff. So we decided on calling our company Harkat Studios and we went to the registration office to get the company registered. There we found out that we had to fill in the name of one of our parents on the form and we were told that it has to be our father. Like upon a little bit of discussion, both me and Karan felt that, and I'm sure a lot of people here agree, that our mothers are probably more responsible 
for bringing us to this position that we are today that we're even thinking of opening a company. So we decided we'll put our mother's name. This didn't go well with the officer behind the desk. And we ended up having a big debate and a big fight, but in the end we had our way. We registered our firm with our mother's name on them, on the papers. But this kind of triggered another idea in our head that women in our society are really undervalued for the important roles they play. You know, we are a land of thousand goddesses, but in reality, we are far from that. We wanted to talk about the stories of ordinary women who were actually extraordinary for us. And we wanted to talk about these women by putting up their stories in public spaces. And these women are not rare. You know, everybody in this room knows them. We know them in the form of our mothers, teachers, friends, and maybe even our mentors. And then we thought that wouldn't it be really cool if a woman artist actually painted this wall, which was about women? And what if she engaged the entire community and these guys came up with the wall together? And so then, in the end, we would have a wall that's been painted by a woman. It's for women. And it actually talks about what it means to be a woman in today's time and in that particular community. So we started hunting for locations where we would initiate this project and we narrowed down on GB Road. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we wanted to go to the infamous red light district of Delhi and paint a wall there. The task was huge, but we were up for it. We got in touch with the all-female German graffiti crew and they were ready to come down to India. We got them here and together we went to GB Road and we tied up with an NGO that works there by the name of Kat Katha that's been working there for a few years, um, met some of the sex workers there who are referred to as Didis and spoke to them, had some interviews, but Honestly, nothing could really prepare us for what we were about to see. So this is GB Road, and that was me and Karan. For what we were about to see, um, most of these, like the girls, uh, the so-called sex workers, were some of them were like really young, and I wasn't really sure if how they had made their way to the brothel was actually legal. In fact, I even heard that some of them had not even left the brothel since the time that they had been brought there. Whatever they wanted was brought to them. The rooms of the brothels were very small and some of them didn't even have like a light in it. And for me, I just felt as if that darkness maybe represented the lives of these women, like no hope, no future, no escape. But there was one thing that these women were really passionate about. They were really protective about their kids. And for their kids, they could take on anyone. The artists, Julia, Stephanie, and Nora, wanted to, wanted to talk about this pure, sacred relationship between a mother and a child and talk about this. So we chose a wall which was right opposite one of the brothels which are also popularly called as Kothas and it was the wall of a dumpster and we thought that we're going to start with that particular wall. So now I'm just going to take you through the video.
the wall progressed something started changing you know the place started feeling less and less like gb road and more and more like a safe place until we came to the end of the finishing of the wall when actually some of the sex workers came down and met with the artists and it was a really empowering and a beautiful environment and like to witness that moment was like just awesome so the sex workers then told us that they actually wanted us to go and paint their brothels and we were obviously up for the challenge again <laughs> so with the limited amount of paint that we were left we went back to one of the oldest and most effective street painting techniques which is dropping drips so we went and then we dropped these beautiful rainbow drips on throughout all of the kothas not all of them like there are lot of them there but the ones that were opposite to a wall and the ones where we could get the permission to do it i recently spoke to gadkatha and i just found out that now they've organized an independent event where they are going to be painting around 25 new walls on their own and this time the didis are going to be actively participating in the actual painting isn't that just beautiful how an idea can spread and have such a positive impact on somebody's life